Hello, my name is Stephen Pepper and I'm alongside Andrew Relvis. Today we are interviewing award-winning journalist Mina Kimes and the NFL's first full-time female official, Sarah Thomas. They are both here as part of the lecture series to talk about Title IX and breaking barriers in sports. Mina Kimes is an NFL analyst, senior writer, podcast host, and television, television contributor for ESPN. Sarah Thomas is one of the nine new game officials added to the roster in 2015, and her story opened the door for a five-part time documentary series, Ear in It, which premiered on Peacock in 2022. We are honored to have you both here today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks so much, guys. You guys doing well? Yeah. First time on campus. Beautiful. <laughs> welcome to Oxford. Yeah, welcome <laughs> to Miami. Yeah, I'll start out with you first, Mina. Sure. Um, you're really a true Swiss Army knife type journalist. You produce so many award-winning pieces, both on the business side and in journalism for sports. Uh, you've done really everything, TV, radio, podcasting. What's been your favorite part, if you could pick, for um, throughout your career, like your favorite experience? Yeah, I, so I have worn a lot of different hats in journalism. Um, having started as not just a writer, but a, a business writer before becoming a sports writer, then getting into radio, podcasting, and then ultimately television, which is what I do now. Honestly, there's a part of me that misses um, long form writing, spending you know weeks reporting on an individual story, digging into things like that. But I really love what I do now, uh, in part because the underlying tools or the things you that are required are pretty similar which is studying researching preparing and then synthesizing an idea and trying to communicate it and it, that's what i enjoy most is just when you feel like you have the idea and then you go on tv and you're trying to communicate it to people hopefully in a way that resonates it's just so fun and it's pretty fulfilling as well absolutely yeah i think just just what the audience says i think that's just what I thank you, you for you get you going every day. Oh, so thanks. <laughs> Appreciate super it. Super exciting. And Miss Thomas, you're the first female official to officiate a major college football game and in the NFL. What inspired you to be an official and how do you stay focused on your journey up the ladder in a male dominated area? I'll have to tell you I was a former college athlete, played basketball and after my collegiate years, I was playing in a men's basketball league and um, I got kicked out of it. And so a couple of months later, I was on the phone with my older brother and just asked him what he was doing one evening. And he said he was going to a football officials meeting. And I said, naturally, can girls do that? And he said, I guess so. Well, I joined him there, had no idea that women weren't officiating football, had no idea we got paid. And I was 23, so I'm knocking on almost 30 years of officiating football. Um, but I was just saying with um, the group that we were just speaking with, I had no clue that uh, there was even a, a potential for me to go to the junior college level or the D1 level, much less the NFL, mm -hmm. until there was an NFL scout scouting a playoff game that I was doing, high school playoff game. And he called me up about four days later and said, you, you, I think you've got what it takes to go to the next level. And of course, he got me plugged in with Gerald Austin, but the inspiration or the in, just being inspired to continue to do this was, I always say, always strive for perfection, knowing that you uh, will never be perfect, but if we can strive for excellence, and that's the mentality I try to have whenever I'm on the football field. I know that I'm gonna miss some and I don't want to, so trying to work that perfect game Plus, it's just a phenomenal sport, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's just the best sport in my mind that there is. And in uh, 2015, when I got hired into the NFL, it just was another uh, gear that I had to go to and just dig in more and uh, reach out for more mentors. But just, um, just trying to be perfect and then also trying not to let anybody down, especially myself, but, you know, the people that have taken a chance on me. Mm -hmm. And you had the opportunity to actually officiate a Super Bowl yeah. a few years back. Is there any, do you notice a difference between just a regular season game officiating mm. that pressure, maybe, maybe pulling that holding call back because of the stakes of the game? Or is there a difference in that Super Bowl versus a regular season game? I will tell you, we all know the Super Bowl that someone's going to be a real champion and then someone's season is going to end. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't shy away from that. But as far as 
hey, the stakes are higher. I think the preparation that we do from the off season, our study sessions during the week, our tests that we take, regular season games, there's a reason that the Super Bowl crew is picked to work the Super Bowl and they've ranked out number one at their position. So the pressure uh, is not necessarily there. I, I think I heard Billie Jean King say pressure is a privilege, mm -hmm. but I add a little more to that is you just can't press and we're trained to, to call what we see and just because it's the biggest stage on TV and of course on a field, it's not that we go, we're gonna call this any differently. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we're ready to call it. Would you say that's the biggest accomplishment of your career, being elevated to the Super Bowl referee? I, I would say on paper, yeah, of course. I mean, being ranked number one is uh, your ability to um, get there and, and on your merit. But I guess um, being respected amongst my peers and having them call me up and ask me questions about plays or, hey, will you take a look at this? Um, that just internally means a whole lot to me. Yeah, I'll go back to you, Mina. Uh, what's been the best part of working for ESPN? Whether it's like radio, podcasting, or just on live TV? You know, um, just hearing Sarah talk about how football is so great and it's yeah. like a, just such an amazing yes. privilege to work in it. The fact that I get to go wake up, study the game, talk about it for a living, have conversations with my friends on television. It never escapes me that it's a dream and a privilege and like something that if I could build a time machine and tell my eight year old self I'd be doing, she would never believe it for a litany of reasons. One of which is there was no one on TV who looks like me doing it, but also it just didn't seem like a real job. And I, I pinch myself every day because of that. Um, so I think just being in that position at ESPN now um, you know, having worn several different hats along the way, it, it's it, it's a dream I like didn't know I had to be honest for a long time. Um, like a lot of people, you know, before I was working in football, before I was covering football, I was spending way too much of my free time thinking about football, watching football. Like if I if this wasn't my job, I would I, I wouldn't be doing it as much as I do in studying, but I would still be investing way too much time <laughs> into it just as a, as a hobby. So the fact that I, I get paid for it is pretty incredible. Yeah, I really think you're like living everyone, every football <laughs> fan's dream. Well, especially because I'm not a former player. Oh, I yeah. always tell my uh -huh. colleagues like our viewers relate more to me than to you, Absolutely. Marcus Spears or Ryan Clark or Dan, because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone ha who watches football has opinions about it. She sure knows about that and, um, and, and loves talking about it with their friends. And yeah, the fact that I get to do it for a living is unbelievable. And there's people watching right now who might aspire to be in your position. Can you give them a little taste of what a TV personality or TV journalist, what their daily routine oh, would look like? I know not every yeah. day is the same. They're pretty different during the season and during the off yeah. season. Mm -hmm. so right now I'm, I'm preparing for the draft, which basically just means watching a lot of college A lot tape. of films. But, dur yeah. but during the, uh, the season, I would say, you know, we're watching the games on Sundays, usually a couple at a time, while we're having a conversation about things we're going to talk about. And I'm always taking notes, gathering stats as I'm watching. And that's before I get to the rewatch. Then on Monday morning, I wake up if I haven't had a chance to. Usually by then, the All-22 is dropped. So we have the opportunity to really watch the games and actually see mm -hmm. what happens. Mm -hmm. um, but it's all focused with, OK, you know, I'm not just watching everything to watch everything. I know we're going to talk about these five games, these topics. So I'm going to watch it with an eye for, I don't know, maybe I want to watch how this quarterback performed against the Blitz or whatever. So mm -hmm. it's all very focused studying. Yeah, Miss Thomas, going back to you, for young girls who want to work in any position in the NFL, what advice would you have for them to move up in that NFL career ladder? Um, my advice to them would just be for them to be themselves because I've learned through this journey um, when you shy away from who you really are or you're wanting pre to pretend that you're someone that you're not, I just, people can see through that. And so try to be as authentic as you possibly can whenever you're striving to, to move in any profession, whether it's in the NFL or any male-dominated profession. But um, that, that's my biggest advice, is just to, uh, relationships that you encounter, but just be authentic and be who you are. And don't be afraid to ask questions. Thank you. Yeah, and I'm gonna shift it back to you, Mina. Um, what advice would you give to any aspiring journalist, anyone in the yeah. similar field uh, of broadcasting? Um, you know, I think 
the things you have to do to be a sports writer are a little bit different from being an analyst, although being a sports writer is ultimately what led me to being an mm -hmm. analyst. Uh, as a writer, I would say it really is all about ideas. Um, because especially with like football, you know, everyone's covering the same games and the same players and whatever, but the reporters who stand out, especially, I would say actually at all levels, are the ones who come up, like decide to approach it from a slightly different way. Like maybe they notice that the long snapper has been doing something different or they're having conversations with the coaches and something sparked something. It really is about um, creativity because you know, otherwise it, it, it can be hard to kind of stand out, especially earlier in career. And then from an analyst perspective, um, I think, you know, really putting in the work and being very focused about, okay, what is going to be my vantage on this game that makes me stand out? Maybe I'm a film person and I'm going to, you know, study harder than everyone else and come with more unique perspectives. Maybe I'm a stats person. Maybe I'm, you know, thinking about football in this way but really recognizing or trying to figure out what is it that can be unique in my vantage and then having the confidence to deliver opinions based on that work, which was, for me, always the hardest part. Mm -hmm. What do you think a college student should do right now as like a number one thing if they want to get into a position like yours? Um, you know, I would say becoming an expert in like one thing is really mm -hmm. like whether it's like I'm gonna learn I'm gonna be the guy on this team or the gal who covers this sport mm -hmm. or whatever and just being like you know I really focusing on learning everything possible about the one roster or one thing and um, I think when you do that people in and around the industry especially like young you know editors who are maybe the kind of people you'd encounter on an entry level are likely to go to you. They're like, oh, this person seems to know literally everything mm -hmm. about this team. And maybe they think of you. And then when they have a podcast, they invite you on. And, and that's how you kind of form relationships that way. Yeah, I, I love that. Just being an expert in one thing. So they should find like a niche or like exactly. be like the biggest expert in the Philadelphia Eagles or something. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Totally. That's nice. And Miss Thomas, it seems like every day I go on Twitter, referees are always heavily criticized. Yes. So, as a referee, I've never talked to a referee in person at the <laughs> highest level like you. How do you deal with criticism uh, online or maybe from a player on the field of a call or your performance? Sure. Uh, one thing, I'm, I don't entertain social media, so I just stay away from that. Um, opinions, everybody is entitled to their own, and I respect that. But the criticism that I get, uh, I try to say, is constructive criticism from my peers or my supervisors, the one that, that matter, uh, mm -hmm. the people that assign my games, those are the ones that I want to take the criticism from and make it into constructive. Um, when a player or a coach addresses something in a passionate way, I do know that I may have seen it differently than they felt I should have seen it or they just don't like it. And uh, rejection is the number one form of, um, or ignoring someone is the number one form of rejection. And so I try to address them in a professional manner, but just move on. But um, I just, I'm, I'm not worried about the rhetoric from the outside world. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really tough job. Just you got to have thick skin and I think you do it the best. It's just really incredible. Well, thank you. Not for, not an easy job at all. That's for sure. <laughs> Do you have any more questions, Andrew? Um, yeah, one more. Um, how has producing pieces in journalism, uh, broadcasting even, just help you kind of map out and navigate uh, this the sports industry as a whole? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I was a journalist before I became mm -hmm. an analyst. And in my previous job, whether it was television pieces or written, you know, it, it was uh, a lot of it was the structuring, the preparation, like so much of being a journalist, you guys know um, from doing it for your school, it, it's all the things you don't see. It's not even what's written or what's on camera. It's everything that goes before that. And then kind of figuring out, okay, we want to tell this story. How do I communicate it? Um, how do I structure it and that? And really, I do the same thing now. It's just in a very different form. I like to say that um, it's almost like I'm giving like, one minute columns like I because when I talk I usually think before I speak <laughs> try to <laughs> and um and, but I what I would do is I it's a similar process where I think about okay how can I I've done all this research I have all these thoughts I've watched these games 
how can I put these thoughts together in a way that's entertaining, that's clear? How can I like, you know, I don't write what I'm gonna say beforehand, but in my mind, I'm like, okay, well, I definitely want to use this statistic. I wanna talk, speak in this order. So it, it's really a similar skill set, even though it's a very different job. So pretty much just add your own spice, add your own flavor to it. That's how Yeah, you yeah. Well, I think, um, you know, I didn't really have success in television until I learned to unwind a little bit and not try to be perfect in what I said. Um, so, you know, I would always try to come in with the bones of the preparation. And early in my career, I overprepared like crazy. I mean, mm. I think, you know, and, um, but then always leave room to improvise a little bit on the spot. It's always better to be overprepared than underprepared. That's right. right. Yeah. Well, we are so honored to have you guys here today, Ms. Kimes, Ms. Thomas. Thank you everyone for tuning in. I am Steven Pepper. And I'm Andrew Elvis. You can find all the MTN's content on the YouTube page. Thank you so much, and we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks a lot, guys.